Hi everybody, so this is part three of our video with Alan Lo, founder of Duddles, a Michelin star Chinese restaurant in Hong Kong. Um, we have just finished a beautiful crab claw and we're about to move on to the next dish, if you don't mind, sir. And you know, like just to give you a little context of like, why are we doing this videos? Um, so obviously we have a promotion going on with Duddles right now, it's just for the month of October. Um, but you know, in a, in a more broad sense, like, Alan, obviously for you as a restaurateur and for me as Clothier, like it is nice to see people out at restaurants eating and dress beautifully. You know, like for me, I certainly enjoy it very much. I think it really enhances the dining experience and hopefully for you as well. That's right. I mean, it's, uh, you know, part of, part of creating Duddles, you know, was to, you know, was to create this kind of notion of a community, mm. um, you know, of um, individuals who have interest in, in art and culture. So, mm. you know, obviously as, as neighbors, mm. it's, uh, you know, we, we love uh, bringing in all kinds of, uh, all kinds of, of culture related contents into the space conversations, you know, with, you know, Obviously, this beautiful Ilse Crawford design space, but, yeah. but at the same time, also learning something about culture. All right, we should probably get back to the topic at hand. So what do we have here? How, well, how can you do Cantonese food without a roast, right? So I figure, you know, we must oh, thank you. have a taste of the ta siu. Wow. Um, um, a roasted barbecue pork, mm. which is, a, you know, a staple in in both, uh, well, actually, both street Chinese food and and fine Chinese food, I think uh, it's uh, it's such a big, you know, the roast, the Cantonese roast, is such a big part of our daily lives. Mm. Um, obviously, over the years, um, top chefs have have uh, have you know evolved the recipe and also um, worked with different. Uh, you know, kind of working up in terms of in terms of qual you know the level of ingredient. Um, so you know, chefs have have, uh, have experimented with Spanish Iberico pork with, uh, and I think um, you know in this case we are uh, we're, we're very happy to be working with a, a local Hong Kong farm. Oh um, wow! I didn't know that. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so please. Please give it a try. So right. it's, it's uh, as opposed to the to the street version. It's it's a uh, the cut is slightly thicker, Ooh. which Amazing. gives you a you know obviously choosing the right cut and and um, obviously the. The roasting master has to be so experienced because you you're, you really control you. It's really about how you control the fire um, and the roasting time in order to achieve something so so perfectly tender. Yet you still need a little bit of that char, right? Mm. So it's it's. Um, um, I don't know if this is going to be, you know, a little too far off topic, but how. You know, I'm a novice to all this, right? So like, do you have to prepare a lot of this in advance? Like, is, is this a very kind of like front-loaded process? Um, yes and no. A lot of the, I think for a, um, for a quality Cantonese restaurant, Chinese restaurant, mm. a, lot of, a lot of ingredients, a lot of the prep work needs to happen on site in the restaurants, you know, whereas obviously, you know, um, you know, some, you know, w chain restaurants, for example, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the prep gets done off site and then sent over to the restaurant. So mm. it, it adds that much more to, in, in terms of, in terms of labor, in terms of manpower. I mean, mm. we, you know, our team here is, you know, close to 30 chefs in the kitchen. So oh, wow. know, I'm in charge of different sections, you know, the stir fry, this, uh, the steam section, the roasting section, the dim sum section. So it's, 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 a, it's a very 
elaborate operation. Mm. Um, it's shame. like you've been coming here so many years, you have no idea. Yeah, yeah. There's like 30 chefs behind the I in, did not in, know in that at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just you. I thought it was just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be right back <laughs> with the next dish. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Tell us a little, like, tell us a little more about the sauce. So it's it's kind of a, a kind of a, a honey soy glaze, mm. um, which gives it the, the that kind of that that beautiful kind of shine, uh, uh, um, glossiness, I guess, in a way, mm. uh, on, on the tasu, and also um, gives it that 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 sweetness. Mm. I mean, I think tasu. Um, a big part of it is the is the is the sweetness, mm. um, and uh, I mean it could just be a one dish meal. You could just eat this with plain rice. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is um, you know, for some people like tasu, it's either the lean version or the fatty version. Do you have a preference? Like, do you like what's you your tend to go for bun fei sao, which is like half lean, half fat. Okay, I, I I feel like you need to have, and also for for it to be tender enough. It's it's this kind of like kind of this 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 very special part of the pork that is uh, where you get the, get this like wound face out texture. I think it's um, it's yeah. Don't just don't think about your diet for a moment. <laughs> I can do that for yeah. this. I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah. Um, you know, I had your Iberico um, pork version. Back when it was still available, yeah. How do you think this compares? I actually quite like. I actually quite like the local pork, mm. um, and also I think it's it's uh, when you think about uh, even though even though the even though Chinese cuisine Chinese chefs tend to be a little bit more old school in 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 terms of in terms of uh, their thinking. Mm. Um, more and more, we also think about like. Um, Carbon footprint, sustainability. Mm. You know, we want to source. We want to be able to work with farmers um, and, and producers in our region. Mm. So you know, without having to without having to ship ingredients from you know five thousand miles away. Sure. Unless unless there's a specific reason. Yeah. Yeah. And it'd be amazing for just like Hong Kong to be. On the map for pork yeah, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it really already is because of tasu. And I guess also like more and more like on from a food safety standpoint, I think people are going are becoming much more aware of where you know really kind of they want to know where the food's coming from. Of course, yeah. And they want to and and they want to know which farm it's coming from. So it's it's it's. It also makes it interesting, makes it a little bit more interesting than yeah. just, you know, a plate of tasu, right? <laughs> Even though it's a really good plate of tasu. <laughs> yeah, I need some white rice. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> Alrighty, man. Well, thanks for sharing. So, in English and Cantonese, again, the name of the dish, please. Matzap <laughs> tasu. Uh, roast. <laughs> I guess roast pork barbecue. I, I mean, we're so used to calling it Cantonese, like, right? Yeah, roasted barbecue pork. What's up, Tasio? Perfect. All right. Thanks for sharing. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks you. for watching. Thank you.